words of Jesus and Muhammad. Write down Exodus 19, verses 9 to 25. Write this down, guys. It was in part two. Exodus 19, verses 9 to 25. Okay? Exodus 20, verses 1 to 3 and 18 to 23. Okay? Exodus 24, verses 9 to 18. Exodus 33, 7 to 11. There it says, God appeared in a pillar of cloud, descending on the mount. The nation saw the pillar of cloud, saw thunders, lightning, fire, smoke, and heard God's voice audibly. And then they saw Moses go up on the mount, enter the cloud, and remain in the cloud 40 days and 40 nights. And that's when he saw God's form. Here, let me show you. All right. That's where he saw God's form. So let's begin. And how Jesus is like Moses. Okay, let's do it again. So let me show you. Numbers 12, 5 to 8. Numbers 12, 5 to 8, include verse 4. Here you go. Here you go. No, no, nobody saw him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, nobody saw him. Okay, here you go. Let's begin, guys. Focus with me. Don't let the demons distract you. Here you go. Numbers 12, 4 to 8, specifically 5 to 8. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Yahuwah, Aaron and Miriam, come out, you three, to the tabernacle meeting. So the three came out. Then the Lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle, door of the tabernacle, and called Aaron and Miriam. And they both went forward. Then he said, hear now my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, Yahuwah, Make myself known to him in a vision, and I speak to him in a dream. Now notice, guys, I'm revisiting what I covered yesterday. I need you to pay attention. God will speak to prophets in dreams and visions and make himself known to them in dreams and visions. Moses was different. Abraham was different. Isaac was different. Okay? Jacob was different, and I'm going to tell you what the difference is. Not so with my servant Moses. Okay, He is faithful in all my house. I speak with him face to face. Okay, I speak with him literally mouth to mouth. You guys listening now? So you can learn what this says. What made Moses unique? God spoke to him mouth to mouth, face to face. Even plainly and not in dark sayings. And he sees the form, the shape, the similitude of Yahuwah. Jehovah appeared to Moses visibly, in visible shape. When Moses entered the cloud and saw him and spoke to him mouth to mouth, face to face, and saw him in visible shape. Right? Even plain light, the dark things, and he sees the form of the Lord, Yahuwah. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Okay, did you guys catch it? So the prophet, like Moses, has mm -hmm. to speak to God directly without any mediation. God speaking him to directly, mouth to mouth, face to face, and he sees God visibly. And yet you just heard the Muslims admit, you heard them admit, nothing in the Quran or even the Hadith show that Allah appeared visibly in front of witnesses as he came down and spoke to Muhammad. You guys heard that, right? You guys caught it? Before I move on? Because we're going to unpack this now. You got it there? So, Moses and Muhammad are not alike because Muhammad did not have Allah come to him in front of witnesses speaking to him face to face, mouth to mouth. That didn't happen. But did that happen with our Lord? Yes. Okay. But before I do that, let me show you a connection with our Lord. He sees the form of the Lord, right? Okay. John 6, 46. What does our Lord say? John 6, 46. Okay. Okay. And John 5, 37. Watch here. John 6, 46 and 5, 37. Watch here. 6, 46. What does our Lord say? Oh, you got this guy, pretending Muslim Jew. Dude, I'm going to block you and I'm going to get the shit on your mother for pretending to be something you're not. John 6, 46. 
Not that anyone has seen the Father, except he who is from God. He has seen the Father. John 6, 46. Now I'm going to unpack the implication of this. You want to go into meat, right? John 5, 37. John 5, 37. Okay, guys, let's go into meat. You guys ready? Class has begun. John 5, 37. Okay. Why are you guys entertaining Abduls and being distracted? Come on, brothers. You're better than that. Help me to help you stay focused. The demons are going to bark like Muhammad who's in hell. Focus. John 5, 37. And the Father himself who sent me has testified of me. You have ne neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his form. You guys caught it? Jesus sees, comprehends the Father, and Jesus knows the shape, the form of the Father and his voice. But those unbelievers who are talking to Christ, they show they have not heard from the Father or seen his shape. Now, let me tell you what this does not mean. Are you ready? Can I explain to you? Now, guys, go on my YouTube channel. Search for the series I did. God, the Father, has been seen or not. I did a series. Has God, the Father, revealed himself, showed himself? Because now let me explain to you what these passages mean and do not mean. Here, when our Lord says to the unbelieving Jews, he's talking to a specific group, you, by your unbelief, show... You've not heard my father's voice or seen his form or shape is not a blanket statement that no one at all, no one at all, okay, has ever heard the father's voice audibly or seen him visibly. Are you guys listening? Jesus is not saying no one at all has ever heard the father's voice audibly or seen a shape visibly. That's not what he means. Can I prove it? You guys ready? Can I prove that? How do I know that's not what our Lord means? Well, here you go. Matthew 17, 5. Whose voice did the disciples hear on the mount audibly? Matthew 17, verse 5. While he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud, saying, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. Say what? Peter, James, and John on the Mount of Transfiguration saw a cloud visibly descend upon them and heard a voice audibly saying, this Jesus is my son whom I love. Listen to him. Here we go again. It's Shakira Fakira. The latter Fakira. You caught it? Are you focusing before I start blocking people or not focusing on Bosnian apologetics who's talking in a language I don't understand because he's trying to marry Anila? She's spoken for, dude. She's not interested. You're not her type. Focus. So did Peter, James, and John hear the Father's voice audibly? And did Peter, James, and John see a cloud visibly, and in the cloud was the Father? Yeah, all right. In case you guys are still skeptical, let me give you other examples. Here's what Peter himself says about this experience, all right? Get ready. Get ready. So I can explain what our Lord did not mean to say and what he did mean to say. But hold on, let me line them up. I did series on these, by the way. Go and watch the series, Has God the Father Been Seen? Here it is. 2 Peter 1, 16 to 18. 2 Peter 1, 16, 18. Peter, 2 Peter 1, 16, 18. Let's go into meat, guys. That's why you're here. For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were, I and the others, as Peter writing, were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We saw his majesty with our own eyes. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. What? A voice. We heard a voice coming to him from the glory we saw. The cloud. That's the glory. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. 
And we heard this voice, which came from heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. So you understand what the Lord did not mean? He was not saying no one at any time has ever heard the Father's voice or seen a shape. That's not his point. He was talking to unbelievers saying, you unbelievers show by your disbelief you have not heard from the Father or seen his glory because otherwise if you did, you'd believe in me. Still not convinced? Okay. Here's John 12, 28 to 30. Same gospel of John. John 12, 28 to 30. This time, a multitude in Jerusalem are gathered and they all hear the Father's voice audibly. Here. John 12, 28 to 30. Here it is. John 12, 28 to 30. So I'm trying to explain to you what the scriptures mean and do not mean. If you're not listening, you're not going to learn. And may the numbers increase for the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. John 12, 20 to 30. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and, have, and will glorify it again. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. They thought it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. So you understand what the Lord meant and did not mean? The Lord did not mean no one has ever seen the Father visibly or heard his voice audibly. It's not what he means. Because I just showed you examples. Peter, James, and John saw a cloud visibly, heard the Father's voice audibly. Jesus says to the Father, glorify your name. And then the Father speaks audibly. And the people hear the voice from heaven. Some think it's thunder. Others think it's an angel. What about John the Baptist? Did he hear from the Father? Here you go. John 1, 32 to 34. John 1, 32 to 34. Okay. Watch here. Pay attention, guys. Don't be distracted. You're not going to learn. John 1, 32 to 34. And John bore witness saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and he remained upon him. Now tell me who's speaking to John. Watch. I did not know him, but he who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he said to me, upon whom you see the Spirit descending, right, and remaining on him, this is he who baptized with the Holy Spirit, and I have seen and testified that this is the Son of God. Who did John hear from? Who told John, the man you see the Spirit descend upon? That's the one who will baptize you with that same Spirit. And that's God's son. Who did John the Baptist hear from? Who told John, this is how you're going to know. This is the one to come. God in the flesh, the son. So the